I am calling to order this regular meeting of the Cordova Recreation and Park District Board at 6.30 p.m. Will you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? This evening, I'd like to invite Kathy Jacobs, President of the Cordova Senior Advisory Board, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Introduce Kathy Jacobs. Um, Kathy has served as president of the Cordova Senior Advisory Board for the last two years. During those two years, Kathy has helped the senior center buy a new bingo system, make repairs to the kiln, and replace the felt on the pool table. Under her presidency, the board has also been more active in attending community events and educating the community about the Senior Advisory Board and the senior center. Kathy, would you like to say a couple words? Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for inviting me today. That was nice. Um, a little bit about the advisory board, in case you're not aware. Our biggest thing is that we spend a lot of time fundraising. So we're always reaching out to people, trying to get them to donate or um, have a little input into what they want around the senior center as well. Um, our biggest events are the yard sale that we have every month or every year. And we just did a baked potato and bingo event last Saturday that was a huge, huge success. So I appreciate everybody having me. And um, our meetings are the second Monday of every month at 1030. So if anybody wants to come by and see what we do, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, could we move on to roll call, please? Director Sloan. Here. Director Danzel. Here. Secretary Yearwood. Here. Chair Leimbach. Here. We received advance notice that Vice Chair Inez Reyes will not be present tonight. Okay, the next item is are there any uh, board disclosures on action items? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to B, which are comments by the public on non-agenda items. Uh, our first speaker <coughs> card has to do with, um, I'm sorry, I can't read the name. Is it spelled P-E-T-A-N-Q-U-E? Brandon Brecton yes, Co. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's called Patonk. It's a French Patonk. word. Patonk. Thank you. you. Have uh, that's the handout. Handout's me. Thank you. Uh, my name's Brendan Cohen. I am the director of Patonk for Club Francais de Sacramento. Um, we are at the corner of Peter A. McEwen and Shriver Avenue at the uh, Mather Sports Complex. We've been a club for about over 20 years or so. We have a healthy community of diverse members between eight and 85, and our oldest member is 95, and 95 years old, excuse me. Um, as in addition to serving as the Patonk Director for Club Francais de Sacramento, I'm also a regional counselor for the national federation called the Federation of Patonk of the United States of America. It's basically our national parent organization provides insurance and does things for our 2,000 member community of Patonk in the United States of America. I'm a regional counselor. I'm also the director of social media for all of our social media enterprises in Facebook and Twitter. Um, we've been growing in Sacramento, and we're trying to really grow our Patonk Club in the United States, and especially here in Sacramento. Um, California is one of the most important regions for Patonk. We have clubs in San Francisco, Lafayette, San Rafael, Sonoma, um, Willits, and these density of clubs really promote an opportunity for inter-club play. We host tournaments, I direct tournaments in Sacramento now for two years, and we host tournaments once a month where club members from the region and sometimes outside of the country and sometimes outside of the states will come and play. And we have people that play twice a week regular at these courts. Um, uh, and just to be brief on what we do is we have tournaments and we have casual play. 
and we're trying to build courts in downtown Sacramento to expand our locations. We already have courts in South Sacramento in Elk Grove, Clor Florin Creek Park, and we have a strong community and it's diverse. We have Hmong members, we have old members, young members. We have a diverse community and it's also a French club as well. So um, not to get off track too much, but it's a strong community and we host regular events and it's a great game for everyone to play. Um, literally anyone can learn the sport and I've been playing since I was 12 and I'm still very much involved as you can tell. Um, what I'm asking for tonight is to increase the safety in the park because we've had two break-ins in the past two years and that shed is an old military locker. It's like a military communications locker and it's bolted tight and we've had people break in twice and steal a bunch of rakes. I don't know what they're going to do with rakes but they took them. Um, I don't think they got a lot of money for them, but it cost us money to replace them. And also other things were stolen as well. Um, so we've had to replace a lock twice and we've had things stolen. Um, I think one of the easiest way to fix this problem is to put lights. Um, you can put one or two lights over by that northwest corner um, next to the soccer park. And that would really uh, deter nighttime activities, which might be nefarious. And it also would allow um, nighttime activation of the park if it were necessary and the adjacent facilities all have lights whether they're seasonally controlled um, through timers or manually controlled by rec parks and recreation staff um, I'm not sure the details can be worked out later the type of light or who controls it um, and how it would be activated but I'm proposing one or two lights in that park that would really uh, deter nefarious activities and increase the safety of our members. We've had issues where people had to leave because people were hanging around. And like I said, the break-ins, that wasn't really a thing in, 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 except for the past several years. Um, if I could interrupt, yes. we limit our public comments to three minutes. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so uh, just finish up quickly, please. We, yes, that's, I'm pretty much done. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And uh, this will be referred so we will go ahead and uh, look into it, and then we'll have our um, recreation superintendent, Jill Nunn's, uh, follow up with you on what we can do to remedy the situation. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Are there any other speaker cards? There are not. Okay, thank you. Uh, so at this time, we will move on to the consent calendar. Um, consent calendar items are considered administratively routine and will be acted upon in one motion unless separate action on a specific item in ne is necessary. The chairperson will consider any request for discussion on the, on the items prior to approval of the consent calendar. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar or would anyone like an item pulled? I'd like to make a motion, Chair Lombok to approve items C1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as stated in the board package. We have a motion from Director Danzel. Is there a second? I'll... A second from Director Sloan. Um, any discussion? There is an item that I would like to um, have a little bit of a discussion on, which is item C5, which is the... Um, transfer of two small um, parcels over to the park district. My um, question about it is some clarification about the benefit to the district in taking on these parcels because while they may be uh, given to us at no charge, there is apparently uh, some maintenance that the park district will have to take on. Good evening, Chair Leinbach and members of the board. I'm happy to clarify that for you. So, um, one of the original design um, aspects of the cobblestone park and those trail parcels included two irrigation main lines that ran side by side that would be owned by two different organizations. And in a long-term maintenance operation, that can create some real problems because if there's a break in one of the irrigation lines, um, it may not be obvious uh, which agency that line belongs to and, and who's responsible for the damage and who fixes it. Um, so in the long term, we felt that it would save the district money in terms of uncomplicating the maintenance of two different 
uh, irrigation lines running through the park. And so we had a much more simplistic solution to the problem, which was we own a much larger trail parcel, which is on the south side of Capitol Village 3 and 4 that has a trail on it. And from that trail come up two spurs of trails that connect um, into the Capitol Village um, subdivision. And so uh, these two trail parcels are connected to ours, and it was very simple to just extend a simple drip irrigation lateral line from our um, larger, much larger parcel to um, water the drought-tolerant landscaping, which consists of some rosemary and um, a couple of magnolia trees. And the size of these parcels are 3,500 square feet each. They're, they're roughly 50 feet by 70 feet. So we felt um, that it would definitely make the long-term maintenance of our park easier if we didn't have to be concerned about providing the HOA with an easement to access their irrigation system while at the same time endangering our irrigation system. Thank you for that additional clarification. And so at this time, I would like to call for the vote. Director Sloan. Aye. Director Danzel. Aye. Director Yearwood. Aye. Chair Lombach. Aye. And, uh, Vice Chair uh, Reyes is not present. Okay, so now we're on to item D, which is presentations, and since there are none on the agenda, we will move on to item E, which is committee reports. We'll start with item E1, the standing committee, the district school district two by two. Director Yearwood or Director Sloan, who would like to start? <clears throat> we met on uh, October 2nd, it was a Monday. We, uh, we had new time. We tried a 3.30 p.m. meeting date time, which seemed to work out better for everybody. Um, the agenda, uh, one of the things on the agenda we started with was a, we talked about safe routes to schools. And I guess there's a grant from the, the city that, uh, right? Some grant for the city, Mike, help me on that, that is going to be help fund some routes for safe school? Potentially, yeah. Right, okay. I don't know what the, no the number is for that. Um, we talked about a ha the Hagen Access Drive, which we are splitting the costs of fixing that damage during the school construction with the, full the, with the school district. And I believe the school district share was $42,000. I'm just looking at heads bobbing yes or no over here so uh, for my figures to make sure I got those right. Um, another, we talked about the joint use agreement amendment, and so that's still on the process. Um, uh, I guess the, this CRPD shut off a lot of their outdoor um, outlets which caused a migration of uh, usage by either homeless or, I don't know, could be teenagers, into the school districts to be using their, their outlets. So that's now being addressed. Taken care of? Taken care of. Taken care of, okay. <laughs> uh, we talked about the community pool update. The uh, RFQ issued on July 8th, uh, submittals. And I guess we're looking at opening in 2020, like Mike's yeah. eyesight, right? <laughs> no, not quite. A long time. Okay. Um, we also talked about the girls' uh, softball complex at Mills, how that project's coming along. Uh, update. We, Laura gave us an update on the Red Barn. Paint looks good. Mike, I don't know if I missed anything or no. you want to add? The only thing I can think of is the new superintendent that was present. And, All right. Uh, um, 
Sarah Collegian. You're braver than I am. Um, but yeah, we, we pretty much covered everything. It's a pretty good meeting, a good discussion. And Danielle does a great job of uh, preparing minutes, so I guess at the next board meeting you'll have prepared minutes from the school by two by two, which is nice to keep, see how things are progressing. Thank you, Director Sloan. Do you have anything to add, Secretary Yearwood? No, no. no? Nicely done. Comprehensively covered? Yes. Yes, yeah. okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, Committee Report E2, Standing Committee District Policies, uh, which was held on October 4th, and uh, Vice Chair Reyes and I attended that Standing Committee meeting, and I will attempt to do it justice. It was actually an information-packed meeting um, talking about um, the progress and the timeline for getting an updated district policy manual because the current policy manual, I don't, I'm not gonna even guess at the age, but it's, it's not a new manual. Uh, we're gonna start with the personnel policies because they are the ones that carry, you know, uh, typically the most liability, so they're, and um, it, it's, you know, given to all the employees and since they act, you know, in the scope of their employment on behalf of the district, they need to do so with a clear understanding of what they, you know, should and should not, you know, be doing or engage or how they should and should not be doing their jobs. I shouldn't imply that they're doing anything under that they shouldn't be, but they need information about how they're supposed to do their jobs. Um, we're going to try and make that manual be both flexible and accountable. It should be a document whereby when policies need updating, they can simply be inserted where they belong. All of the directors will be given a binder uh, with tabs. And as the various sections of the policies are updated, you'll be able to keep an updated manual for yourself. And the staff is uh, currently working on the personnel policies. We do have a uh, preliminary table of contents. It's being, um, the policies are being considered by a work group from all uh, representative areas of the district. So the hope is to have that policy manual complete in a year. Um, the policy committee meeting, policy committee will meet probably quarterly, and then we will look to have a work group with the full board about halfway through, and then a second work group with the full board when it's ready to move forward so that you're comfortable with the contents when it comes time to you know, make a vote to approve these policies. Um, so at, um, beyond that, the other thing I, you know, sort of skipped through one, two, and three, incorporating it all in what I just said to you. And lastly, as item on that um, agenda was the finance policy for debt management. And you will be seeing that policy later in this meeting. Um, but I wanted to, um, highlight the fact that by putting this debt policy, debt management policy in place, the district is positioned to refinance the Mather loan and cut the interest rate from 4.5% to 2.5%. So uh, it's an important uh, tool for the finance department to have as they seek, you know, to better the, um, current loan that we have on Mather and to assist us going forward with the pool financing too. So that is my report. I hope I didn't go on too long, but said enough. Okay, so now we're going to move on to item F, which is public hearings. And again, there are none, so we'll move to the regular calendar. And we will start with authorize, um, Item G1, which is to authorize the district administrator to execute a park use agreement with the Cordova Community Council to allow the use of the Village Green for the annual holiday tree lighting event on November 26, 2017. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Leinbach, members of the board, Jill Nunn's Recreation Superintendent. 
Um, this evening for your approval is the park use agreement for the 2017 holiday tree lighting at the Village Green. The agreement, um, other than some date changes, we did add one clarification to the agreement. That's um, number five. We just added in there in exchange for the district waiving fees for the use of the Village Green. The council agrees to provide the district a predominant booth and tent location agreed upon by both parties prior to the event date. Now the CCC has always provided the district with the 10 by 10 space underneath their tent. We just wanted to make sure that we got this item added into um, the, the agreement. So with that, if you guys have any questions. Uh, does not appear that anyone has any questions. So I would ask for a motion. I move the Board of Directors authorize the District Administrator to execute a park use agreement with the Cordova Community Council to allow the use of the Village Green for the annual holiday tree lighting event on November 26, 2017. Thank you, Director Danzel. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Secretary Yearwood. Roll call vote, please. Director Sloan? Aye. Director Danzel? Aye. Secretary Yearwood? Aye. Uh, Chair Limbach? Aye. And Director Reyes is not present. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to item G2, which is to authorize the district administrator to update the program schematic design and cost estimate for the future Heron Landing Park community building. Good evening, Chair Leinbach and members of the board. Um, district uh, staff is asking the um, board to approve our ability to um, pick back up the design of the Heron Landing building and um, be able to uh, revisit the programming of that building and the schematic design which impacts the cost of the building so that uh, we can move ahead with construction documents. At this point, we're anticipating um, construction funding for that building to be available in approximately three years. And um, so we're looking ahead to uh, how we're going to house uh, all of the district staff as well as the um, community um, aspects of that building, the community spaces. Um, so. Uh, we're looking to revisit it's going to we have right now a balance on that project remaining um, for the uh, design of the building of 221,000 so there is adequate funding in the existing contract with HLA to be able to um, complete this work so uh, I'm available for any questions if you have any. And so with a design change, um, it, it's likely that the construction costs would increase, correct, for that building. Will there be sufficient room in the um, monies set aside for Heron Landing Park to uh, you know, cover those additional costs if they come along? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, there should be. We're projecting um, park impact fee collections that would accommodate um, that any increase, if there is an increase. And that's part of what we have to evaluate because we have had um, turnover in the district administration and the recreation staff. And one of the first things that you have to do as you're designing a facility is determine what your program is. And with that changeover, we need to reevaluate, just double check our um, initial programming assumptions, determine if they're still valid, and that could affect, of course, what the schematic design is that we've already come up with. Um, it's a 10,000 square foot building. Um, will the size of that building change? That's not clear to me yet, but we'd certainly know that after we get through the um, revisiting the programming. And at that point, once we have a more, uh, once we know how much the building may or may not change, then we can come back to you with a, an amendment 
um, to the design contract to extend it a little bit to adjust for whatever that scope change might be. So, so, uh, so I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so there might be a change in scope, right? And this whole and usage of this building and, and what will, programs will be uh, coming from this building, right? That's a possibility. How it will yes. be programmed. Um, is this something that we need to involve the community again for for their support? Or are we just going to go in with our own, you know, schematic and hope they like it? Or is it something that, because I like to, I mean, I don't want us to take away from what they thought they were getting. Right. Although I think they would be happy if it was, it was at one point, I think they, we scaled it down to a smaller building. But I, I don't, I'd like to know if that's something that we need to involve the community out there, at least the, uh, the HOA groups? I think that it is certainly um, valid to uh, provide an update if there's a significant update to that. Um, but certainly with the new recreation staff on board, um, it's, it's possible that uh, the way that building was um, originally conceived to be programmed could be improved. It, it's hard to know. Um, I don't really anticipate wholesale changes to the building. And in fact, there, there is actually um, on the site a diagram of um, where that building sits on the site. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, and the community has seen the building in other public meetings, and so have you. You've seen some of the elevations of the building in, in past presentations. So... Um, so I don't expect it to change a significant amount that would warrant wholesale community um, meetings on that. I think, okay. uh, I believe that, um, I would anticipate at this point that an update to the community would be warranted though. Okay, great, thank you. So if the programming and schematic design phases have already been completed, and it resulted in not expending the full amount of the budget for that item. And so then we're going to ask them to look at it a different way um, based on a sort of changes in the vision with the recreation and the administration department. Would then both schematics be looked at either just by staff or, you know, to speak maybe to Director Sloan's point? Offer, offering the public input into which they would prefer? Is there some idea about that kind of, how that change might, you know, So the, look? Bu the building was presented in the original community outreach and, at, and I guess we can determine at the point how much uh, the building is going to change, if it's going to change that much whether that warrants community output. But right now in the plan, we do not have um, a community outreach component related to the specific design of the building. We, so. And also to note, we're not changing the function of what the intentions were. It will still be a community center. Um, so the additional design features that we're looking to is maybe to relook at those spaces associated with the program, like Laura was mentioning, we may have originally designed for, say, a gym or some kind of function where it may be best served by multi-purpose rooms or a preschool, uh, additional office space, things like that. So it may not change the integrity of the building design at all. It may slightly, depending on what adjustments we need to make to accommodate our programs and also our staffing needs. May I add, it, it's hard to answer those questions without having those discussions and, and bringing everybody back to the table to determine what, um, ex to what extent there's a difference. I see, yeah. Is it, um, so, so this is just sort of a, a, an introduction to a possibility at this point, that you are going to ask the consultant to do some more work based on the fact that there's availability in the budget, but that, that it's not a, uh, a, a determination that 
the changes will be made. That's correct. Okay. Um, because I would so think, it's preliminary. So the way I envision this work moving forward is that at the point that we've kind of got our arms around about what the changes might need to be, then we would come back to you and say, okay, we've established that the scope is is this big, or and these are the changes, and here is an amendment to the architect's contract because we're going to have to. Add, they did have to do a little bit more work to get to that point where we can describe that. And so we'll come back to you with an amendment at that point. And maybe that's an opportune time to um, have um, the consultant make a, well, wait a minute, they won't have an amendment yet. But soon after that, they could come back and um, make a presentation as to what the changes were. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion on this item? Oh, I'll move the Board of Directors authorize the district administrator to update the program, schematic design, and cost estimates for the future Heron Landing Park community building. Thank you, Secretary Yearwood. I'll second that. Thank you, Director Sloan. A roll call vote, please. Director Sloan. Aye. Director Danzel. Aye. Secretary Yearwood. Aye. Chair Lombach. Aye. And Vice Chairperson Reyes is not present. Okay, we're gonna move now on to item G3, which is to authorize the district administrator to sign a memorandum of understanding with the city of Rancho Cordova for community enhancement funds in the amount of $76,478 for the Lincoln Village Parkhorse Project. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, Chair Leimbach and members of the board. Okay, I think that you folks have seen this project previously um, because it was a, a grant application that we made to the city of Rancho Cordova, which they awarded. And we're really happy to be able to bring this enhancement to Lincoln Village. Um, and so it's a parkour. It's very similar to what uh, the type of amenity that was installed at the Sun River Park. Um, and so this is an MOU that um, is very similar, almost exactly the same as the MOU that we had for the Sun River Park Horse um, Enhancement Grant with the city. So um, we're asking for you folks to approve this MOU and then we can go ahead and get started on the project. Fabulous. Does anyone have any uh, questions? I have a question. Is this going to go in that area that's the uh, where that decomposed granite is in the front? Yes, it is. Okay, great. I've been waiting for something to go in there. I knew that. <laughs> if it wasn't going to be Patonk or Bocce, then I want <laughs> yeah. something that's healthy. Yeah, I think it's okay. going to be a great addition to the Yeah, park. I think so, too. Any other questions or... Comments? Uh, then perhaps someone would like to make a motion. Um, I move that we authorize the district administrator to sign a memorandum of understanding with the city of Rancho Cordova for community enhancement funds in the amount of $76,478 for the Lincoln Village Parkour Project. Thank you, Director Sloan. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Director Danzel. Roll call, please. Director Sloan. Director Danzel. Aye. Secretary Yearwood. Aye. And Chairperson Leinbach. Aye. Dur uh, Vice Chairman and Inez Reyes is not present. Okay, and we're going to move on to item G4, which is to approve the closure of the district's administrative office located in the Rancho Cordova City Hall building for the period of Monday, December 25 through Friday, December 29, 2017. Thank you, Chair Lineback. I'm Andrea White, the Human Resource Manager, and I would like to present this staff report um, an effort to close the district offices um, for the one week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, and what we're proposing is that uh, the offices are closed, but that does not mean that employees um, 
are not working. Uh, you can see on the calendar here, there are only two and a half days of that week are their work days, and employees can choose to work on those days, and we just won't be accepting customers or uh, at the front door, um, and we have many special projects that we could be working on, or they can choose to take um, a crew time off, vacation, CTO, admin leave, whatever we have available that's eligible to use. Um, and we've talked about how do we want to approach this in future years. Um, and we talked about we we would like to add this to the policy manual. Um, we thought of the idea of having it closed every year with that option, or um, the idea was brought up that we could uh, leave it up to the discretion of the district administrator and bring it to the board as an informational item, as long as it's not adding additional holidays to the um, policy manual. And if you have any questions, let me know. Are there any questions? I can just, I'll just, you know, insert my uh, retired Fulton El Camino cap and tell you that that week almost no public attempts to contact a park district because they are so involved in their holiday plans. So there's really very little public impact for an item like this. Um, speaking from the person who originally set this policy or this this time off about four or five years ago um, I'm glad that we finally have come to the point where we uh, are looking at it as something to just make happen versus having to bring it to us every year um, it's it's taken some time but I think the year that I had it we were it was pretty much the same scenario and it was like nobody's gonna work those two and a half days anyway because and especially with Christmas being uh, this year being on that Monday, it's really going to be, you know, tough and with travel, things like that. So I'm just glad that we've we've come to the point where um, we will have a chance to actually vote on that, I believe, because it'll be a policy. Um, but I'm, I'm glad we finally come to that that uh, realization that we need to put it in the policy manual. That being said. Are there any other comments or questions? So I have a quick question. So are we just approving this year or are we approving this this year? Just this year? Okay. This is for this year only because we're amending the entire personnel policy. Okay. I didn't want to add a one-off amendment when the whole manual should be completed before the holidays next year. Okay. Will, this, will the configuration always change with the placement of one Christmas or... New it, Year's is like it if it's could. on a weekend. Yeah, it could because it's always obviously on the twenty fifth, and the first is New Year's, and that's why uh, we're considering making the policy state that we will the closures will be decided by the administrator and will inform the board of directors. But that doesn't mean we're giving additional holiday time. The closure will be determined on an annual basis, and the board will be notified of what days those are. So again, no one's getting any additional. Um, time off, paid time off, um, the closures are going to fit the dates that are appropriate every year. Yeah. Oh, is there a motion? I move the Board of Directors approve the closure for, for the District Administrative Offices for the period of Monday, December 25th through Friday, December 29th, 2017. Thank you, Director Danzel. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Secretary Yearwood. Roll call vote, please. Director Sloan. Aye. Director Danzel. Aye. Secretary Yearwood. Aye. Chairperson Leimbach. Aye. And Vice Chair Reyes is not present. Thank you. Okay. And our last regular calendar item is G5, uh, Adopt District Budget and Finance Policy Debt Management. All right, good evening, Chair Lineback and board members. Uh, as Chair Lineback stated earlier in our committee report, that uh, we are diligently working on our personnel policy. But at the yeah, at three minutes, thank you. Uh, but equally as important are the financial policies. And uh, really, in times of necessity for, for me to bill or for the district to do business. And so this year in 2017, Senate Bill 1029 passed 
and it amended the government code in relation to uh, debt management policy. And it basically, the legislator, uh, legislature say, stated that the debt issuance, it needs to be transparent, it needs to be uh, allow for citizens to analyze, to interpret, and to understand exactly why the debt issuance is taking place and how those funds are being used to finance facilities and services. And so the requirements uh, force into uh, five basic categories, you know, the purpose of the debt, the type of the debt, the relationship of the debt to the budget and to the capital um, improvement plan and long-term planning of the district, their goals, and then internal control. How exactly is that process being handled? And so for us to have this updated and revised policy, it allows us to take a, a look at our current debt that we have with the Mather Sports Center loan, and then also a possibility for opportunities for other um, capital infrastructure repairs, such as the pool project. And so this is the tool that we need to move forward um, to, to, to put together a financing plan, basically. And so that's the purpose of bringing this debt management policy to the board today. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? So if not, how about a motion? I move the Board of Directors adopts the proposed policy district budget and finance policy debt management. Thank you, Director Danzel. I'll second that. Thank you, Director Sloan. Roll call vote, please. Director Sloan. Aye. Director Danzel. Aye. Secretary Yearwood? Aye. Chairperson Leinbach? Aye. And Vice Chair Reyes is absent. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to item H, Board of Director items. And that is uh, board member reports. We'll start with A, which is training, the CSDA annual conference, which was September 25 to the 28th in this year. Um, even though my name appears first on the agenda, I will ask Director Sloan to make his report first. Okay. I gotta find my paperwork. Would you like me to report first? Um, sure, if you want. Okay. <laughs> I wrote stuff down this time. <laughs> As I attended several sessions, one was on comfort animals versus service animals regarding um, both the ADA, but also the California version of FEMA. I, what do they call that? California employment? I don't know. Um, and noting that the California law covers comfort animals, even though the federal law doesn't, and we are subject to the California law in this matter, which means that you have to accept even comfort animals as long as they um, have been certified to be a comfort animal. The certifications are not as rigorous necessarily as some of the um, service animals. Um, I believe also the difference is that under the federal law, it covers dogs only, and comfort animals can be other types of animals under the California law. Rabbits. Yes, exactly, cats, rabbits, <sighs> maybe even a donkey named Cupcake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then um, one that was uh, particularly pertinent, I know Matt is completely conversant in all of this, but it was still an interesting learning experience for me, was a session on strategies for utilizing debt in public agencies. And a lot of the uh, type of, of information that you've given us in finance committee meetings about what your balance sheet needs to look like, your debt to revenue ratio, um, cash reserves, uh, which you've also told us about, six months worth of cash reserves is ideal. And um, so I guess what I walked away from uh, that session is knowing that this district is really doing it the right way. You know, it seems to understand all the things they need to understand to, to make proper uh, debt decisions. So that was a in very interesting and informative session for me, but I do know that the district is well up on this issue. Uh, then I uh, attended another session that uh, Brent Ives conducted, and it, the topic was speaking plainly through policy, and I thought that was timely because the district, uh, through its policy committee, is going to be working very heavily on policy. Um, I 
maybe I shouldn't say this, but it, it, the part on actual policy in that session was fairly short, and then we went on to the type of session with Brent Ives that we've all been in before, which is the relationship of the board to the public and board to the staff. Um, but it didn't seem so much about policy as it was about, you know, good practices when it comes to board relations. Uh, the fourth item was turning public perceptions um, to the positive from the negative. So if you have a negative um, item before you, an item that the public perceives in a negative way that you have to deal with, how to turn around those public perceptions so that they are positive. And a lot of it was about um, communicating across all spectrums of social media, um, reach out as many ways as you can reach out, um, to be completely on, uh, transparent about what you're doing, tell them everything you're doing and why you're doing it, and uh, to stay on message and to try not to react to negativity, but to stay on message about the positive benefits of whatever that um, particular issue is in front of the Park District. And lastly, I uh, attended two sessions that um, were required in order to get a sexual harassment prevention certificate that is mandatory for um, board and staff. So I currently have that certification um, and um, I know that the other board members will be moving on to getting it too if they don't already have it through their employment, which some do. So that is my report, Director Sloan. Did you find your paper yet? Yeah, but I, I, it's a lot of uh, kind of repeat what you just said because I think we I must have sat in some of the same ones that you. One I guess you didn't sit in was one was called Better Boards Equal Better Districts. So it's basically a, um, how the board can work better with their with their districts and the staff. And I thought that was very interesting. I, I always look for that kind of. Uh, the collaboration, rather than you know a position of power, you know I have a position of of, of unity. Um, I forget the district, but the, that one district that suffered the loss to a, a major community park because of the uh, Oral Dam um, flooding. Do you remember the name of that district? What was it? Orville. That's uh, or or is it Chico? It was up north. It was the Feather. Oh, Feather River. Yeah, I thought that was f fabulous. Uh, they won some type of uh, award. They were on the panel of distinction about how they could, um, how the how the community banded together to help them get that park cleaned up and reopened. And um, you know, we're we're sitting. I, I just remember seeing the paper, looking at the paper recently, and seeing a photograph of the devastation of what's going on with the wildfires and. You saw a whole neighborhood wiped out, and if you looked in the background, you saw a little green space, and you knew that was their community park back there, and it was still green. I mean, the fire, I mean, I guess maybe the trees might have been charred, but that whole neighborhood is going to be rebuilding, and that park district is going to have to go in there and rebuild, or the, the city's going to have to rebuild all their new parks, and it's going to be a whole new planning. So, I mean, it's a, it's a phase that we're, a lot of the districts are going into dealing with catastrophes and, and things that happen and how we can get people on board, which is all part of the uh, partnership program, I think, that we're, we're striving for here in, at C CRPD. So um, besides the, the seminar breakout sessions, the whole collaboration with, with peers, whether they're in a, uh, a water district, sewer, cemetery, you see, you seem to you see this um, this unity and this sort of like everyone has their everyone has issues and deals. I I said in that one where how you dealt with uh, with the opposition and complaints because you know that's these are important. And was that the one where they had actually break out where you had to talk to the media? Because there was another one where we had to we had to come back and field questions from the media. No, it yeah. must have been a different session. Yeah, that was interesting too, because because uh, how we how we can can jump from a from a problem like we've had some issues in, in our in our district, and we've had the media come approach us, and these are important that we learn these kind of things, and this is the type of seminar 
type of uh, platform that we learn those kind of uh, situations and how to deal with them. So I, I really enjoyed it. It was a beautiful location. And um, I look forward to the next one. Thank you, Director Sloan. Um, so we are now on to item B there, which is board member community activities and meetings report. And can you start, Director Sloan? Uh, okay. September 24th, I guess turn your calendar back, was the uh, Brecca Potluck Picnic. And thanks to, I think, Andrea, we had all sorts of little games to play uh, that came from the park district and prizes and the kids loved it and she also brought a, uh, the pinata. I think we were in charge of the pinata too. And no kid got hit in the face with a bat because I think they, didn't, they couldn't, they didn't have a bat. Did they? They had something that didn't work, and so someone had to get improvised. Like I think they used a uh, sword. a sword from uh, from Darth Vader or something. Um, but it was it was a nice a nice little event, and um, kudos to the park district for you know participating in there. Um, on October third, I attended the Rancho Cordova Athletic Association meeting, and basically they're wrapping up their um, their renovation projects for the year. And they did mention about a new um, basketball league that's going to be, I think it's going to be all the Rancho Cordova Youth Basketball League is going to be starting to form. Um, Fletcher, Coach Fletcher uh, Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, he's the uh, varsity coach. He's uh, kind of spearheading that and getting that moving. It's, so there might be some. I don't know if there's any way to collaborate with that, but, you know. But there's definitely going to be another program where, for youth to get involved. Besides, I guess the uh, the third grade. This is part. I think they're looking at more of a into the junior high school age bracket. Um, also, I guess there's um, there's twenty two thousand dollars that's going to be put into. Little League Field lights, and I found out that they were on the school property, not the park property. And let's go to October 5th. I attended the Rancho Cordova, Ranch, Rosemont Community Association, as did uh, Chair Leinbach, and uh, basically maybe I'll let her cover that part. It wasn't, I mean, there wasn't a lot on the agenda for us, but the um, only thing I saw that there was a, Terry Dugan met with uh, Patrick, and that was either regarding the leash laws? Was that? Okay. So I think that's an issue that a lot of the parks are having. I get messages on my uh, next door about uh, what is the rule about dogs off the leash? And so, you know, it's, it's stated dogs must be kept on leash, but, you know, a lot of the uh, patrons don't uh, abide by that rule. They, Right. Well, I, I did talk to Terry. <clears throat> One of the residents in the area were concerned about dogs off leash. Um, so we reviewed the signage out at that park and also the ordinance that the um, CRPD follows, which is a county ordinance. Um, so it is actually a citation that we could be granting if uh, it was deemed unsafe. Um, we could dispatch our Sac County Sheriff to go out there and cite if that were the case. Um, so the results of that were, once I kind of shared with him the ordinance and how we could implement that, um, it became something more of a individual concern more than a community concern. Right. And so um, that's how it was resolved. Um, but it did um, have us go out, I, I believe Horatio even, uh, went out and checked the signage at those parks. And we are in the process of updating our signage um, in all of our parks at this point to address certain issues like that. Yeah, you know, I see that. It's it's widespread. I mean, I see it in my my community park. I mean, my neighborhood park. And it's usually after dinner um, where the, the, the dog owners will take their dog to the park for a walk and take them off the leash and let them run. And what I, what the issue is, is there might be someone who's, definitely against it and doesn't like it, but what do they do? Do they call somebody to come cite them? I think what we need to do is maybe have some um, somebody there at that time and, and observing it and then just 
tell the people? Because I don't want the person who's mad about it to be issue. No, if the person knows who's calling the the turning the finger on them, then you're going to cause a problem in the neighborhood, and I don't want that to happen. So it would be more of a a site inspection, a surprise a visit by park officials saying, and just observing at the 6 o'clock hour, 6.30 hour, what's going on in the park just before it gets dark, you know? Do you know that there's a, a leash law here? And he says, oh, I'm sorry. And then they'll, they'll probably, you know. How, how we would typically handle a situation like that is we wouldn't come at it in a punitive way. We would be community education at that point. Right. So it wouldn't be like we would dispatch like it's an emergency because it certainly is not an emergency. Right. Um, but we did not establish a pattern of that happening in this particular case uh, to the point where I was going to uh, offer the assistance of a Sac County Sheriff to do a drive-by to inspect and uh, if there's a pattern that's occurring that was established, that we would have had someone kind of drive by and see what was going on. But the initial um, approach for that kind of a situation would be an education approach instead of a punitive approach, um, because we don't want to come across as, you know, don't use our parks. And well, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the is it the, the state or the county? Who owns the, 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 walk, the uh, river area? That's county? They 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 change their policy and and they let people know it's 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 like the, if they see a ranger sees your dog off a leash, boom ticket. There's no warning anymore. So the people of that changed that whole. We're following the same ordinance, so it's Sac County ordinance. Um, if they have an ability to cite regularly, um, then they have that resources to do so. We don't. Right. Um, so we would be really, in essence, calling to make that happen. Um, but we would need more data collected for us to be timing it appropriately to address the issue. Right. Uh, right. And that was not identified in this particular situation. It was just more of a anecdotal question about what would we do if uh, neighbors were concerned about off-leash dogs in the park. Well, who's liable if a kid gets bitten? I'm just curious. Dog owner, because they were warned, right? Because the sign. Okay. Um, let's go to October thirteenth. I went to the Rosemont Homecoming Parade, and uh, I walked the route and took photographs. And on October fourteenth, I went to the Rancho Cordova Athletic Association Hall of Fame, which was. Uh, during the uh, homecoming festivities that uh, Director Yearwood was partaking because it was his 30th class reunion, right? 30 or 40? Is there any need to get that in the public record? Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> yes, and we were a handsome, young-looking group of people. And uh, today I uh, attended the uh, CARPD uh, board meeting and uh, we actually set the date for the next conference, which will be back in South Lake Tahoe. But a um, little bit easier of a drive. Um, and it's going to be a, starting a day earlier. They're going to try it on a Wednesday. And I said, well, that works as long as it's not the third Wednesday in the month. So, will it conflict with the ledge days, though? Because usually they they're trying, they're, right up to the they're, I don't know if it's going to be right at the end of that, or it's going to be at the end of the month. So it's going to start on um, May 30th, and it's going to end on June 1st, which is a Friday. I won't be there. You won't be there? Graduation of high school. That's what they didn't look at. No, I, I mentioned that because the last day of school is on the 31st. The 31st, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And don't they usually have graduations the next week? Friday, the next day. Oh, it's the next, the next day. day? For high school. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Noah's uh, elementary school, I talked to them, they said it's on the day before. Graduation. Yeah. Day after last day. Uh, that's. I mentioned it to them, and they seem to seem think it's. Well, even if it. Oh, because of the timing, that's why. I don't know. Sorry, sorry about that. We can always drive down, go to the graduation, and then drive back up. It's only an hour and a half. <laughs> Come on. 
And let's see. Oh, the big news is, I don't know, you probably already know that uh, signed a landmark uh, bill, which was, um, where is it, <laughs> SB5, which is the, um, it will be on the ballot in June of 2018, the park bond, was uh, signed by the governor, $4 billion general obligation bond that's going to go out, not just, it's going to be for water districts too and flood control. But um, it's a big, a big bond, and we're all, now we're discussing ways that we can support it without taking a position, because it's the same thing. Just like a run, you know, a measure. You can't tell people. I can't tell people how to vote on this thing. We can just educate them on what it's all about. Um, Director Sloan, is there a per capita in that? Um... They, they're. That's what they're. They're. I think it's going to be a per capita mm -hmm. per district. So I mean, I think I heard. Two hundred thousand dollars for is that possible for our district or something like that? Or do you know about I it? I think it depends on the area. Right. Um, it's statewide, so um, I'm not sure it's a completely identified. I'm not um, right. familiar with the actual amounts, but I do believe we may be eligible for some of the monies coming forward. And I, I do want to. Um, Emphasize we as a staff did go down to the state capitol and supported this through um, You know rallying I guess is what they called it at yeah, the time right. So I we're really excited about the opportunity and hopefully it gets voted in and that helped that rally really helped Yeah, I mean, it did. That was a uh, they did the same thing when we had the CSDA no the um, CPRS down at the capitol we had a we had a rally in front of the and I think De, De Leon came out and spoke and he came out again at your rally, and um, but uh, it's it's that's big news, and so now June eight two thousand eighteen. Look for it on the ballot, and hopefully we go in the right direction. Well, Thanks. thank you for your report, Director Sloan. Uh, Director Danzel, do you have a report? Um, I just want to uh, let the board know that on October thirtieth, I've got my um, commit my committee that I'm on for uh, LAFCO that where we moved to Monday the 30th. It's supposed to be the, uh, the fifth, tu fifth Tuesday, but being it was Halloween, we decided to move it up a day. And last time that we were supposed to hold a meeting, everybody bailed on us and didn't notify us. So um, this, this one I have a feeling is going to be long, plus some of the other things coming up tonight on voting, things that we're going to have, we'll end up discussing at that level also. So. Okay, thank you, Director Denzel. Secretary Yearwood, do you have a report? I actually don't have anything to report on. Oh, my homecoming was great, or my reunion was great, though. Homecoming I'll leave it at that. Huh? Homecoming was okay, too. Yeah, homecoming was all right. Football game was good. Well, thank you. Uh, my report will be very brief. I, I'm going to cycle back to the dogs off leash for a second. Um, there were people at the RCA that understood that other people's dogs ought to be on a leash. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and I, I got a report on the food truck event that was on uh, that Friday. October? Uh, the 6th, I guess, of October. Um, because it was their first uh, beer garden. And they did very, very well. Apparently, they grossed 1200 and fifty dollars on the beer garden alone, and huh? after expenses, they're giving ten percent of the revenue to the food truck owners, and ah, ten percent of the revenue to the Friends of Cordova. So the Friends of Cordova should see a donation in the range of a hundred dollars. So that is my report. Anything yep, yeah, anything goes. And so now we're going to move on to item H2, which is uh, board officers' appointments and elections. These are roll call vote items. We're going to start with um, item A, which is to appoint two directors to the ad hoc committee for the 2017 district administrator evaluation review. And as chair of the board, 
with their permission, I would like to appoint Director Danzel and Secretary Yearwood to this ad hoc committee. Okay, thank you very much. And we're going to move on now to item B, which is a ballot vote uh, for Sacramento LAFCO Special District Commissioner and Alternative. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just gonna read off the staff report associated with this topic. Um, the Sacramento Local Agency Formation Commission is conducting a mail ballot vote for special district commissioner office number seven and alternate special district commissioner office number six and seven. The term of these offices is from January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2021. There are three candidates for commissioner and five candidates for alternative and their statements of qualifications are in your packet this evening. The board may vote for one candidate on a ballot A and only one candidate on ballot B. As it, at, as a meeting held, at the meeting held on August 16, 2007, the board of directors nominated Secretary Michael Yearwood uh, for commissioner and alternative alternate and adopted resolution 1718-21 approving his service on the commission if elected. There is no direct fiscal impact associated with voting for a member of the Cordova Recreation and Park District Board for LAFCO Commissioner, as voting does not guarantee election. The election to a LAFCO Commissioner seat does not include additional compensation above what is permitted in district policy for meeting attendance. Ballots are due by 4 p.m. on November 15th. And with that, I will turn it over to Chair Leimbach to facilitate the discussion. Okay, if there's any, does anyone uh, have a motion or they would like to make? Do they have a preference to any of the candidates they see here for uh, LAFCO Commissioner? Office number seven. Um, no, I mean, I know Gay Jones <laughs> personally, but um, I have to vote for my man here. Okay, I, I would like to uh, put a comment on the record, by the way, that uh, I, I've met Gay Jones and she is a fabulous, um, you know, asset to the community and I'm sure she's done a great job on the LAFCO board, but we are a an independent special district that relies on property taxes for its um, operations. And I feel like uh, too many of the boards around the state that deal with special districts are loaded with enterprise district representatives, of which Gay is one because a fire district is an enterprise district mainly, partially. It's sort of a hybrid, I guess. Um, so I always think that we should consider um, independent special district nominees that are not on enterprise districts. That does tend to support our own Secretary Yearwood. So if the speech nomination, if, if the process permits it, am I able to make a motion? I believe so. You'd have to go with ballot A first, and then we'll go to ballot B. Well, I would like to move that the Board of Directors vote for Michael Yearwood for Sacramento LAFCO Special District Commissioner Office Number 7. I second that motion. Thank you, Director Danzel. Roll, tall, roll call vote, please. Director Sloan? Aye. Director Danzel? Aye. <laughs> Director Yearwood? How you voting? Yes, you should vote. Uh, 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 aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Chairperson Lime. Aye. And now we need to move on to the alternate seat, six and seven. I just know seven. that um, Vice Chairperson Reyes is absent. Thank you very much. So we'll now move on to the alternate commissioner office number six and seven. Chair Lebuck, I would like to um, put Secretary Yearwood's name in for that one also. Thank you, Director Danzel. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Director Sloan. Roll call vote. Director Sloan. Aye. Director Danzel. Aye. Director Yearwood. Aye. Chairperson Lineback. Aye. And Vice Chairperson Reyes is absent. Okay. Good luck, Good luck, Secretary Yearwood. We hope that our selection is elected. 
Okay. We're going to move on to item I, comments by staff on non-agenda items. Okay. Uh, just some updates and reports. Uh, let me get my glasses. Uh, staff met with the Folsom Cordova Unified School District staff to discuss the revisions of the joint use agreement. Uh, we are currently reviewing that agreement and will be making updates um, to go back to the school district for their review. Some things that we're going to look to include that were not in the original uh, joint use agreement is more of the usage of the pool as we're now talking about having a pool within the next couple of years. Uh, we'll be looking to add components to that in this agreement. We met with, uh, staff met with Supervisor Natoli as well as county uh, staff on park impact fees and the progress with adopting the CRPD Nexus study results. Uh, we attended the Cordova Community Pool Design Consultant Selection Committee. Uh, the meeting uh, was on Monday and there was a uh, decision made and will be brought forward to the board at the November meeting as to the consultant group that we uh, chose for the top candidate. We did a tour, staff, myself, park planning, um, went on a very nice tour of the Easton, Aerojet, Westboro um, areas of the district in Rio del Oro. Uh, we had a great tour with one of the developers there, and it was really quite fascinating because you don't have access to those areas because it is locked down from Aerojet. Um, so we got a back um, roads kind of experience there to see really the gravity of the size of these projects is enormous. Um, so it was a great experience, and I think Laura had been waiting for this for years, so she did her ha happy dance with that once we got that going on. So um, it was fantastic. We are scheduled to do a management retreat um, in on November 2nd. Uh, we'll be doing one to talk about next year's goals. Uh, we'll do some team building exercises as well as some time management training for staff and some PowerPoint training, specialty of Matt Goodell here. Uh, we're doing a park grand opening, so mark your calendars for Heron Landing Community Park Ribbon Cutting. It is scheduled for December 16th, and it's at 11 o'clock, and we'll be promoting and handing out um, formal invitations to diplomats coming up very soon. In budget and finance, uh, the district shall issue a single series of lease revenue certificates of participation to fund the approximate $5 million replacement costs for the Cordova Community Pool Project. And the refinance an approximately $2.5 million outstanding amount of the Capital One lease generated from the Mather Sports Center complex. The Debt will be secured by a lease, lease-back structure sold to investors in a public offering requiring full disclosure and repayment through the general fund and investors uh, and any legal available funds for the district. The finance team shall be included uh, with John's, Jones Hall, who we've used in the past for bond disclosure counsel, and the Brandeis Tallman underwriting marketing investors. The process will begin it's actually started as the time of the report was written, and it will typically take four months to receive the proceeds from this, uh, and we shall be having a designated trustee to hold on to the money once we receive it, which will secure that. An estimated timeline for this is December, January, the item to the board for approval, and then January, February, the sale of the COPs, and February and March will close the loan, and we will have funding for the pool. So that's super exciting. And I want to Thank Matt for really being tenacious and making sure that this happens and getting all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted. This is really quite a um, accomplishment. So just a really outstanding job from Matt. Did you want to add something? Yeah, I do, uh, to, to have a full understanding of this. So, so as I discussed earlier during the policy, there are different types of debt. And this particular one is a lease-lease buyback. So uh, some of them are dependent upon uh, property tax revenue. Some of them are dependent upon... Uh, revenue generating from that asset. So if we're building a sports complex, all the revenues that we're going to receive that are going to be used to pay back the loan. In this particular structure, they're, they're looking at our full asset list and they're probably going to choose a couple of parks to um, kind of hold on to as our collateral. And so that's what they're going to hold against. They're going to lean against those properties until the, the full loan is paid back within the time frame of probably 20 years. 
And I, th- I believe we did the exact same thing with the Mather Sports Loan. We had two parks, Sonoma and Tuscany, that we used for collateral. And so it's the exact same structure that we did for that loan at a much, much better rate. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. Um, some other great news is the property located adjacent to the Cordova Golf Course is available to rent again. Uh, we prepped it, and last year the district earned 1800 per month for the 1.8 acreage uh, frontage parcel until the tenant moved out. It is now ready uh, and is advertised for 3000 a month through the network Cornish and Carrie as the agent looking to rent that property for us. Uh, we went through a recruitment and we picked an amazing administrative assistant who's sitting to my right. And um, thank you for your service tonight and filling in for Danielle. Pam is our new uh, administrative assistant at Hagen Community Center. The district has selected internal candidate Pam Wickens from over 100 applications received for this position. Pam has been with the district for over four years and has been an essential part of the team at Hagen Community Center. And thank you and congratulations, Pam. Thank you. Uh, in park services, um, we hired our supervisor of irrigation. The full-time competitive position has been filled by internal candidate Martine Fonsenka. Oh, good, I got that. Martine has worked for the district for over 11 years and has proven to be a natural leader in the field. So I'm really excited to be able to announce that we're internally bringing folks up um, and they're ready and they are the most qualified candidates. We did go through, go through a competitive recruitment process with outside candidates also being vying for these positions. And it's just such a great testament to the staff themselves as well as the supervisors that they were the best candidate and were ready for the positions that they're now holding. So that's great. Uh, we started the personnel policies and thank you, Andrea, for really um, moving forward with that. Uh, the discussion of hepatitis A has come up, um, unfortunately. Um, we are ahead of it. We were seeing it in the news, and we said, let's get ahead of this instead of react to it. And so we had Andrea and Jerry attend a Sacramento County Environmental Management Department meeting on September 29th. Um, due to this outbreak, there happened to be a coincidental meet meeting about this topic, um, ironically enough, we were the only park district that attended this meeting, but it does affect our park staff and obviously our participants in our programs. And so we are looking to get some strategies, best practices, and hopefully, hopefully um, some safety precautions for our staff to make sure that this isn't something that they're going to have to deal with going forward. So. Uh, also, the American River Parkway Coalition, Horacio, um, has been attending the American River Parkway Coalition meetings and has gathered information regarding river projects, grants, and other pertinent new uh, issues regarding the park district as it relates to Sacramento County. In recreation, we had doggy days, which was great. I brought my two dogs. I believe Matt brought his two dogs, and they had a great time out there. Um, they had over 300 humans plus their dogs, which is a great attendance for this year. Uh, Hagen Park, um, Hagen Community Barn cleanup occurred on September 30th. Uh, Director Yearwood and myself were able to hang out with Cupcake, the, the donkey, was fantastic. Um, they did an amazing job. It was really nice to see the volunteerism out there. Uh, it was a lot of hard labor. They were knocking down fences and moving, you know, new fencing in. Um, Cupcake has a really nice stretch of land out there to kind of graze at this point. Uh, it was really in poor shape, and so it was really taking quite an effort to um, straighten up the chicken coops and all of that stuff. So thank you to all of the, the volunteers for that. Um, in addition to that day, the Sac Valley uh, Live Steamers also um, fundraised at the same time, and we're able to uh, raise $166.75 for the barn. So that was nice. They were running their little trains during that time and donated that to our efforts. So I wanted to thank them for that as well. In preschool, they visited Fog Willow Farms on the week of October 2nd. Um, we hosted a Hindu cultural event on September 23rd uh, at the, Hague, or at the uh, Mather Sports Center. And adult, adult softball, USA softball of Sacramento held their 
first annual league uh, championship series at several parks across the um, Sacramento County as well as at Mather. Uh, we are working on the ADA transition plan update. Uh, we have designated an ADA 504 coordinator, Andrea White, and met with the consultant to discuss district policies updates related to the accessibility and notices of requests for public input. Uh, Planning and Park Services had several meetings to schedule the highest priority projects associated with ADA projects. Um, we have substantial completion meeting um, that was conducted on September 18th. The contractor is working on completing the punch list item and the maintenance period will end December 15th, 2017 for Heron Landing Community Park. The ribbon cutting, as I said, will be held December 16th, 2017 and will be available for the public at that time. And that concludes my report. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask or comments on this report? Well, thank you, Administrator Larkin. Um, we're going to move on to information items, correspondence, articles, and public outreach. Okay, so there was one article that was a customer comment, and I should say compliment, uh, uh, kudo to, to uh, the staff at Mather Sports Center and the condition of Mather Sports Center. Um, there was a uh, letter to the Rancho Cordova Chamber of Commerce thanking the Park District for the Explore Rancho Cordova program cooperation. Uh, there were seven email, uh, oh, there was an email blast, seven design work pieces, and we also have attached the Neil Orchard Senior Activity Center newsletter. And unless there are any comments and questions on those information items. I'll, I'll add also just um, a special note with this uh, special event invitations page we do have Halloween at Hagen, of course, coming up on uh, October 28th. Uh, Veterans Day celebration, November 8th at the Nail Orchard uh, Activity Center. And then a district all staff Thanksgiving potluck, uh, which we're bringing back. And it's gonna be November 14th. Um, we're gonna be doing a canned food drive to support the food bank. And we encourage you all to attend if you can. So what should we bring to the potluck? Um, you can bring your nice self and a can and to share for the raffle. Okay. Unless you. you'd like to have a specialty dish that you make, but um, you can I make a mean cookie pizza. Okay, let's bring it. <laughs> yeah. You you're open to bring whatever you'd like or you can just bring yourself in a canned item for us to donate. Can we bring more than one can? Yes you can. <laughs> Do you get more than yes, one I ticket? Can. Yes I can. Yes you can. <laughs> I believe we're going to try to set up, if you bring a can, you get a raffle ticket per can um, that goes into the raffle. So the more cans you bring, the more raffle tickets you get to win prizes. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Chair Leinbach, just looking at the administrative board calendar, um, the October 27th, and it's too late now, but October 27th is the uh, CRPD uh, teen event, the Friday night, late night at the hideout. Um, just so the district knows, and I know there's been some change down at, with the hideout, um, it's also the same night as the Mitchell Middle School's uh, first dance of the year. So I know that that didn't get communicated, and I've already gone to the school and let them know that they need to let, let the, the staff know when those things come up. But as a parent of a child who goes to school there, I was just I just got the email... I think Monday telling me I've got a dance on the 27th, so I know the hideout plans a month, uh, at least a month ahead. So I let the administration over there know, hey, you know, it's in November. It's it's at the, the same time. So oh, man, they used to have those right after school. No, it's I think it starts at like five to five to nine or something that night. Oh. So for middle school, I know I'm like Dakota's not staying out that late. That's November. No, October, October 27th. Wait. Is is the Mitchell Middle School dance? Uh, it's uh, also the same night as the the teen night for the the hideout. So, well, so I have a fall carnival at my elementary school. Exactly. So, okay, and a football game that night. Yeah, I, exactly. So I'm trying to figure out how to get my daughter to a football game, and yeah. So.
Football. It's a home game too. Okay, and also um, just to note that on the agenda, the next regular board meeting is November 15, 2017, at which there will be employee certificates and awards. Um, so we've already talked about the uh, calendar, so we will move on to item L, which is a closed session. And would you like to read this? Public Employee Performance Evaluation Pursuant to the California Government Code Section 54957 titled District Administrator Recess to Closed Session Community Boardroom. Okay, and the time is now 7.55.